My guest today is Lisa Messenger, owner and creative director of The Messenger Group, a brand engagement agency that specialises in custom publishing. Welcome to In Her Shoes. Thanks, Susie. Thank you for joining us. The business is almost 10 years old yes. and it started out as Messenger Marketing. Yes. It's now the Messenger Group and it's an umbrella organisation for a number of companies. Tell us what that looks like. Uh, well, there's seven companies in the business now. We actually added two more in our 10th year. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why not indeed? Yeah. Um, the first five are primarily marketing and, uh, and publishing businesses. So print brokerage and publishing and magazines and books and yeah, so they all fall and, and Messenger Interactive. So yeah, marketing and publishing businesses. Mm -hmm. And the last two are actually property and styling businesses because that is my latest passion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a couple of different things going on there under that one group. Yes. When you started the business, was it a plan to have a portfolio of businesses? No. <laughs> no, that wasn't the design? Not at all. It was just to keep my head above water and just, you know, have one business and love what I was doing. And it actually started as a sponsorship agency. So, you know, it's gone down a very, very different trajectory. So what are the things to consider when you decide, oh, there's another opportunity that could be its own entity? What do you need to consider? Because I imagine there's some risk with doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not adverse to risk. I love risk. I think you just, I, I think with me about 95% of what I do is gut and intuition and about 5% is calculated, you know, <laughs> research and it kind of works. One of the biggest thing is, and we were talking about this just this week is, I'm so grateful for the team that I have created or the people that I surround myself with because it's quite extraordinary for an entrepreneur to be able to sort of just say, okay, now we're doing this and now we're doing this and, now, and they just all jump with me and go and love it. And uh, a couple of my colleagues have said, you know, that's an enviable position to be in because so many people as an employee will just think, well, this is my job and this is what I'm going mm -hmm. to do. But my team just go, let's go, let's jump in and do it. And I think that's been one of the things that, you know, they share my passion and we manage to do it together. So that's what's exciting. I think what has to underlie that is a wonderful vision that yes. the others can get enrolled in. Yeah. And uh, knowing you for a few years that I have done, I know how vibrant you can make that vision. Um, how do you communicate that to your team? Look, I think, well, there's actually a few things and there's probably something that precedes that. And that is, um, the biggest thing for me is being open to opportunities because they are everywhere and the market is completely changing and morphing all the time. And I think you need to be able to jump very quickly and adapt to that. And I think that's what we've done. So we identified, you know, from initially sponsorship we then saw an opportunity with books and we saw an age-old industry and I think this applies to anything and being able to just turn it on its head and take a different direction and I think with that you know it's very juicy and it's very exciting because you kind of go this is cool you know it's something different and then from there you know people started saying to us once we got a reputation in the marketplace we know you print offshore <coughs> excuse me so rather than and then they were saying can we have your print printer's details and rather than sort of saying well no you can't because that's where we make our money it was much e easier then to create messenger print brokerage so then you sort of say well yes we've got a business that deals with that so a lot of the marketing and publishing businesses are just natural adjuncts to the first business if that makes sense um, messenger interactive deals with all the online so you know once you've done a book you want to turn it into an ebook or an iPhone app or you want to you know do some Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn and all that sort of thing so that business kind of looks after that so it's it's just a natural progression to be able to siphon existing clients into other businesses uh, the property businesses are just something that I absolutely fell in love with. About three years ago, I started investing. I can't believe we worked together all these those years ago with Robert Kiyosaki, and now I'm finally putting some strategies into it's place. Great. It's great. But um, yeah, and I just fell in love with it from the word go. So I've been playing a lot in that space in the last... Um, well, in the last five months, I've bought three properties, and, and that's been just a huge that's journey and a great learning curve. And, and uh, yeah, so, so from that, people started saying, wow, can you sort of help us a little bit with that? So, again, there's the crosses over. We're doing a, a series of seven books in the property sector at the moment and bringing on people like CBA and Gaydens and Deloitte and a whole lot of great partners really talking about and helping to educate um, the consumer. Because what I realised was, 
you know, because I'm so prolific on Facebook and all sorts of other networking medium, people start saying, how do you do that? Like, and I want to help other people and impart mm. the information. So I guess those businesses have naturally come mm. from that. And if we look at you as an example for those of, you know, who are watching um, this episode, it is, you know, looking at what am I already doing that I do well that I could be doing for another that may be a potential Absolutely. revenue stream. It's just, I think for me, it's about, you know, talking to my broader broader colleagues and networks and, and getting the feedback and people will say, wow, that's fantastic, how did you do that? And some of it you just want to help people and say, well, I'd love to mentor you or help you with whatever it is that you want to do. But some of it you go, okay, I've been asked this on a number of occasions right. now, let's actually turn this into something tangible that is a business, you know? Mm. And because um, why not? And it's all about passion. And to be honest, um, it is our 10th year and last year being the ninth year, I came to a wall. I kind of went, I've been doing this for so long, you know, what is it? Do I need to go and, you know, sit on a rock somewhere for a year or, you know, and meditate? Uh, or do I, you know, jump back in and find something within the business that really excites me mm. again? And I chose the latter, a little bit of the former as well. And, uh, you know, so I had to find, refine that passion and really get reignited around it. And so for me, it's just being open to opportunities and having lots of different things going on. Let's talk very quickly about, um, you know, you said you took a break, you had to recommit to the business. Mm. Perhaps some strategies that have worked for you in, you know, having, it's different when you start a business to when you're in that eight, nine, ten year point. Yeah. What could you share with those watching about what helps you keep your head above water and motivated and passionate? You have a lot of energy, I'm sure anyone <laughs> watching can see that, but how do you keep your head in the right place? Yeah, I suppose um, I've really gone down quite a quite a big personal development journey for the last seven years in particular, and uh, and you know a lot of that has been soul searching. Last year I went to a, a raw food vegan commune in Costa Rica, <laughs> which was an interesting experience. I'm not in a rush to go back, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I guess I put myself out there and I explore lots of different things. Um, I've done a lot of cathartic work, a lot of different personal development things. Just questioning, you know, I don't want to be one of those people who wakes up in another five years and goes, I'm still doing the same old thing that I'm doing. So I'm always checking in with myself and what's important to me and, and what are my values and mm. what are my beliefs because I love business. It gets me, it gets me out of bed every morning and every day kind of feels like Christmas, but it's also, is that the be all and end all, you know? So I, I'm constantly looking for that I'm not going to say work-life balance because I think that positions work as the enemy, but you know that holistic viewpoint. Um, yeah, but it's, sometimes it's difficult to to find that passion. Right now and this year, the space I've been in, I made a very conscious decision at the beginning of the year that you know this is my year. I turned 40 in at the end of December and. Uh, and I struggled a little bit coming up to that and it's the business's 10th year and I thought I'm going to give this a red hot go. So, but a lot of it is surrounding yourself, as I said before, with an mm. amazing team who really believe in you and you know, and we have a lot of tears in the office and a lot of love and dance offs and we all <laughs> really share each other's energy <laughs> and it's kind of become like a family and it's very raw and it's very real and I think that's what kind of keeps me grounded and keeps me going. Okay. Well, congratulations yeah. on all your success. Thank you. And um, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Susie.